5412 Hello everyone, welcome to the podcast. Uh, so we've carried on and uh, we've downloaded uh, Linux Fedora server and we've installed it as a virtual machine on the chip. Uh, so now it's just a case of uh, configuring the server and uh, getting it going. Uh, we've covered a lot. Uh, it's been really frustrating and difficult. Uh, there's a lot of negative points about the whole Linux thing in general. Uh, however, if you just stick with it and uh, just keep practicing, uh, uh, we'll get there. So, uh, previously we've used our C++ as simple as possible, the C++ ASAP, to get uh, a build going. Uh, you can check back on the channel for a couple of other videos about that. Uh, we decided to get it a bit more complicated by adding the uh, Fedora server. However, that being said, we've kind of got to get up to speed with the industry standards. So there's uh, in the background, uh, there's all sorts of this uh, Kubernetes and Docker and stuff like that. It's trying to solve all of these build and install and run issues. Uh, especially when you start managing complexity. Because really that's uh, what, what the, the issue is really, isn't it? Of course, the problem with Linux really is productivity, uh, basically, because it is, uh, well, there's a lot of negatives to it, uh, basically, it's incomprehensible, uh, incomprehensible language, like, there's, you know, there isn't really any rhyme or reason to the language used to describe it or to operate it and make it functional, which is a big drawback, uh, and, because it's, that individual and that customizable and um, it's that interdependent uh it brings all kinds of issues along with it uh there's some positive sides to the whole thing as well uh for example it makes your developer a top developer however that being said in the real world it might not it might not count very much inside of industry so we've laid out the world mountain division and we also uh, come unstuck. So we've installed and built boost libraries. Uh, we've added the pathway to the system path. And uh, we can still do stuff at the command line. It's just that uh, as soon as we hit the integrated development environment, such as Visual Studio or Eclipse, it can't actually find anything anywhere. So it's totally infuriating, really. It's a big pain, uh, really. So Linux for software engineers, I don't know. Don't actually know about it, to be honest. However, if we go over to the Red Hat, so Red Hat Linux is kind of like the industry that puts out the Linux Fedora for free. So it's kind of like an entry level or as a test, test or entry level, easy to use, not that complex. Free, of course. Uh, but behind that, uh, behind the Linux Fedora series is the Red Hat company, right? So Red Hat Linux. Uh, again, another version of Linux. Uh, but they, if you go over to the Red Hat website and register, uh, you can get yourself a ton of free books uh, that takes you from uh, the command line, uh, you know, like as simple as possible command lines. It uh, works through the bash scripts or whatever. And uh, also leads you onto these uh, Docker and Kubernetes. And also uh, looking at virtual machines. So theoretically on the Linux Fedora Workstation 35 build, we could virtu just install any other edition of Linux as well and have it running at the same time on the same PC. Uh, there's lots of Linuxes. Kali Linux probably being the most common one. Uh, that's used by hackers, basically. So, Kali Linux. If you want to be a hacker, you grab all the Kali Linux. And uh, we might have mentioned Ubuntu. Of course, Ubuntu is also very, very popular uh, for the end user. Linux itself is, is uh, to be honest, from what I've discovered recently, it's, it's much more to do with systems admin. Uh, rather than anything else, it seems to be totally geared towards managing clusters, uh, highly, you know, managing a data center or managing a server farm, uh, basically. 
So it really does come uh, into its own. Uh, from the perspective of the vid- individual developer, and that does, uh, we're hitting the massive wall block here it, it, in Linux. Whereas if we'd have spent uh, the same amount of time just programming C Sharp on .NET, by now we would have achieved during the same time frame with hardly any complexity whatsoever. Uh, we would have achieved far greater results. Right? We wouldn't be traps right behind this uh, incomprehensibility in the in the cryptic sort of Linux thing. Right, so there's definitely, yeah, there might be a bit of uh, heroic element in programming on Linux and C++. But I guess, you know, it's a bit, you know, it's languishing in the doldrums in, in comparison. An interesting note to point out, if you can suss out how to build packages uh, you can finally get it all working. You can hit uh, Unreal Engine, for example, that's available on Linux. Of course, you've got to go get it, you've got to build it, you've got to uh, compile it, and you've got to install it as well, all yourself. Whereas on Windows, all you've got to do is just double tap, a, uh, double click the uh, box, and uh, it'll install for you. Same with those coin on Windows, it builds instantaneously, straight away. Whereas on Linux, we haven't yet managed to do that. So, Oh, it's kind of one of them. It's an interesting journey. You get to see every little thing from the bootloader to the Linux kernel uh, to all the different libraries that are involved to the packaging, installing. And you can do a lot from the Linux command line, and especially with the shell scripting. But it's asking a heck of a lot in terms of an investment in the technology. Uh, something that Windows, you don't have to... Uh, you don't have to worry about any of this on Windows. Uh, basically, the uh, Visual Studio. Obviously, you need a Microsoft operating system, Windows 10, or what have you. And uh, yeah, on Linux, you could probably get high performance computing uh, a bit better because you can like strip down all the unnecessary elements that are in Windows. Windows is a very bloated operating system. But uh, that being said. Uh, it's almost not worth the investment like on Linux in terms of the, the difficulty and the complexity. Right, it's in terms of the time you spent learning all of this, uh, that same effort, you would have been better off just programming in C Sharp on .NET. You would have achieved far greater results. It's far more productive, basically. Uh, it's a bit more, bit more realistic as regards the business world as well. So the, the Linux thing it excels in, in in the infrastructure, basically in terms of infrastructure and administration, and that, that's why it's like yeah it does have a little you know it has a few little cool sort of odds and ends, but if truth be told, uh, it's incomprehensible uh, basically it's complex, and yeah the amount of investment the individual person has to make in learning it. Is unreasonable. Uh, so, so as 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 compared to Microsoft, so you may be better off hitting Microsoft for the. Uh, you can get the beta, the Windows Server 22 beta, and just download and install that, and you can do everything: data domain name systems, lightweight directory active protocol, virtual machine provisioning, remote installation, in a far more comprehensible manner, basically. Uh, so uh, it's kind of one of them is it worth pursuing it may be too late basically it may be too late in the game uh, really if you it would then again your individual person you know your student or whatever you know your individual developer it may be good for their personal developer to work through this uh, however, the skills might not actually be transferable into the wider economy I uh, yet. Uh, it's all a bit, you know, well it's a bit line, it's all a bit command shell, it's a bit like uh, playing Dragon Quest on the, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, you had them text-based adventure games, kind of like that, really, when basically on the Windows server platform, uh, especially developing in C Sharp on .NET, you can use a Visual Studio Community Edition. You open running instantaneously. Things build. It integrates great with GitHub, so you can get all your versions and what have you. 
and uh, so it's one of them. It needs tidying up. Uh, so I think that if you kind of like follow the line of path, you're going to end up at Kubernetes and Docker, which is about installing infrastructure. Generally speaking, it's about uh, virtualized network provisioning, stuff like that. All sort of data center and server form sort of things. So uh, it's one of them. Yeah, it's the open source thing is free, free and free uh, in that it's it's free and it doesn't cost anything. It's free as in you can do whatever you want with source code. Uh, and, and whatever the, other fr the third freedom was. But that that being said it is it is it's incomprehensible. Like really it's archaic, incomprehensible. Uh the learning cycle on it for every little thing it seems to me that to achieve every little thing, you need to go and learn another thing, with, and then to learn that thing, there's another thing, and that chain of dependency, that complexity, of, of, and the ability for any push into that f to cause a fault, generally speaking, in 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 your line is loadout as well. That's also a key issue, right? As well, so yeah, it can pretty much do everything. The Windows can but uh, then again it might not really be worth it because it like you know it's it's far simpler on Windows you can get Visual Studio 22 build going on the 180 day beta and spend the next 180 days on that on C Sharp uh, on .NET and you'll achieve A million times more. Yeah, you won't be able to say you're a C plus plus purist on the, on the Linux command shell, and, but then again, is that really a good thing? I know it's I know in the industry it's held up, and that and like it's, you know like if you look at that skill set on, on what people are looking for in jobs and stuff like that, but in reality, it don't actually work like that because you've got to ask yourself. Say I'm going to spend the next 180 days developing. By the end of it on Linux, your brain's going to be fried, basically. Whereas on Windows, it's it's, it's easy, right? And say what you want about the company and its corporate image or what have you, or you know the rest of it. But there's also that basic economic fact where you know if it's a business, then it's it's, it's got to have all of these uh, economic economic issues resolved. So yeah, we can achieve all of this on Linux. It doesn't, you know. Like you got to ask yourself the question, yeah. In six months' time, if I spend the next six months on Linux, yeah, programming C plus plus, yeah, you could probably come out with the world's greatest software. Uh, and certainly you can hit Unreal Engine, the Unreal Engine 5 source code as well. They give that away for free. So if you wanted to build on Linux. Uh, I have, uh, somebody suggested that I get on Ubuntu. So I might just, just flip everything out onto Ubuntu and see if, see if it works on Ubuntu. Because uh, it might be a better supported platform. I like the uh, Fedora kernel. It's stable as heck. It doesn't fault like other versions of Linux. That's one thing that it really has going for it. With regards to everything else, uh, not so much, really. Right. So, yeah, it's one of them. We're still uh, intending to pursue uh, the C++ ASAP program on Linux Fedora and, and get it going with the server and showing. Well, that... <sighs> uh, to be honest, I think what I'm saying is that it might be just easier to to do it all on Windows and use the Linux Fedora as a target build, right? And it might not uh, be worth the investment because it it expands very quickly, right? And there's all sorts of all, all sorts of crazy stuff going on with it, right? Whereas with the Microsoft platform, it's simple. Uh, however, I've got to say with Microsoft, uh, when you, once you've got a Microsoft working with loads of apps on it and stuff like that, it does slow down to it max. Like it is it is clunky. Like you know you know however it's 
generally speaking, things work on it. You know, it's probably better if you're thinking about developing software uh, kind of like economically in 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 the real world with results uh you know results oriented then you're probably best off rolling out on windows like if truth be told uh and everything's already supported on windows in audio you have the vst kit asio and all that whereas uh, online it's incomprehensible right so it's one of them so we're still going to carry on with the C++ ASAP program uh, however if you're looking for results in, in real time in the real world and trying to get there without uh, being in trouble with all of this then I'd have to you know recommend yeah, get yourself a Windows get yourself a C Sharp and a Visual Studio it's all for, you can get it all for free download it and get going and it has all of the stuff built in like support is miles better right so you can say what you want about you know the Linux versus Windows debate the open source versus paid for sort of thing but you're asking for a world of pain going into Linux basically and saying that you're, you're, you know you're pretty smart on Linux or what have you it's kind of not worth the pain. Uh, it's not worth the investment and the effort and the, the complexity. Like, there are things that you can do online that you can't actually do on Windows, basically, like in terms of high-performance computing. You know, it's all like big stuff. Windows Server can handle that. Uh, and it's just that uh, the technology is the same. The microchips and the internet and all that, it's the same. It's just that because of these open source interconnect standards, OSI model, uh, ANSI ISO standards, American National Standards, uh, International Standard Organization type models, what have you. And of course, Microsoft have always put their own little version on everything. Don't forget the uh, Microsoft compilers generated more than 200 billion US dollars in sales revenue. Right, so having a boffin around who knows all of this sort of things could be pretty handy, say for example, but uh, that's kind of on the off chance. Uh, you're probably better off working in C Sharp uh, on Windows platform, and it's definitely easy to making video games and stuff like that. The DirectX, the Vulkan API, uh, OpenGL, and Boost. Uh, uh, so it's it's one of those things. The ability of the language itself and the ANSI ISO standard in C allows it to proliferate lots of different versions of itself. For example, I could put my own version of Linux on, we could do a basic materials project Linux and so on and so forth and build it from scratch, do all these amazing things. But the industry itself would have moved on a long time ago. Right, and you were kind of left on a bit of an overreach. Like, yeah, for the individual developer, it's very satisfying. And you do get uh, maybe a bit technical or you know, there are, there are positives to it. Uh, but say, for example, if you want anything sort of like delivered in real time and have a market, Microsoft platform, you've got access to around 2 billion people uh, on a Windows platform, as well as potential end users and so on and so forth. So it seems to me that uh, the truth about Linux for the end user and the desktop guy and your developer and your artist and your musician and your professional podcaster or your streamer and stuff like that and your gamer, that's the, it's an afterthought, if truth be told. Like, it's, it's an interesting add-on and it might, yeah, there's a lot of people invested in that space and pushing that, but and some good innovation do come from open source. Like, let's face it, it can achieve stuff, but it gets complex quickly, it kind of loses the weight, and then it gets myriad, uh, like a maze, it gets overly complex, it gets myriad, so, the, uh, I guess the C++ ASAP, the iterated build, deploy, install and update process that we've been going on about, for keeping it simple, uh, is all good and well, and, that, and for your individual, it certainly could be tailored uh, and particularly in science and research and stuff like that, and maybe a bit of, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, what have you. And of course, there's all sorts of issues with device drivers and conflicts as well. 
that uh, a paid-for product doesn't actually have because the money is there to pay for a team and the team can like have the resources it takes. Uh, I'm sure if you threw together a team of developers uh, in a in in a paid for developer sort of environment, that's that's the difference between Red Hat. It is paid for. It's a paid for product versus the Fedora. Fedora is the free entry level version that get you used to learning the concepts and stuff, and everything does work on it. But a uh, Microsoft look at Adobe, uh, Ableton, Steinberg, uh, Adobe massive in software. The, you know, if you look at the credits on the Adobe Creative Cloud, like literally ten thousand people have contributed to that over the life cycle of the product, which has been going longer than Linux Adobe uh, since the eighties, as a matter of fact. So that's like twenty, thirty years of development that I've went into it, paid for development. So if you look at the engineer hours, etc., etc., etc. Granted, you pay a monthly subscription for the Creative Cloud, but in terms of the software engineering hours that went into that product, we're talking tens of millions of engineer hours, and, and that's tens of millions of paid for engineer hours. Open source is that had about a similar, but much more disparate contribution, and you find that some pushes in open source were paid for, and they had corporate sponsors uh, behind it as well, but. Certainly, in a low resource setting, if you don't have a lot of cash, you can do everything. You can do it. We've done basic materials projects as regards audio. There's somewhere out there, uh, but using software like Ubuntu Studio or Audio Visual Linux dist- distros distributions, we've managed to achieve a bunch of step by step processes, uh, such as rendering, uh, uh, using Blender, for example, to render blank. Uh, blank videos or using audacity or to record the vocal track for example and uh, using a couple of open source tools on the audio visual line it's over ubuntu studio to do a bit of post production in a similar way if you had adobe creative cloud but in a way you this month for example in the month of january if you spent your time using open source tools you're certainly going to be more productive pay using a paid for subscription using a paid for software so there's uh, the basic business concerns and the basic economic concerns that are going to impede how, how much time can you volunteer from your daily schedule and uh, your work life balance like what have you so the ideal is a fine ideal when it comes to open source you know freedom Freedom, 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 isn't it? So you're free to look at the source code, you're free to use the source code, and you're free to modify and individuate that source code as well. You see, whereas, you know, obviously on Microsoft platform, you know, paid for products. But then again, your productivity. So, and I'll make a bet all across the IT industry this year, yeah. I'll make a bet. People in C Sharp on .NET this year are going to release more software, yeah, probably than everybody else combined, basically, because it's simply that much more productive. You can make video games, do 3D, uh, do some Matrix stuff as well on it, where you can uh, do a bit of graphics processing. It's got web hookup calls, it's got client server features, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, it does cost, uh, there's a cost of being on a Windows platform uh, that doesn't exist on Linux, but in terms of productivity, uh, Linux leads you into the maze. It's myriad. Uh, I'm trying to think about that Greek myth uh, where you get lost in it. Yeah, your developer. You know, it's good for your developers to have a bash at it, but it's also kind of like in terms of economic model and if we look at the finances behind it and uh, productivity and schedule and management uh, yeah the two two different philosophies basically and we're seeing that if you're a business and you want to get stuff done but then again if you're in infrastructure and on server side uh, Linux is great for that because we started out this on this C plus plus ASAP on Linux Fedora Workstation thirty five and it's got here. Like I've spent a bit of time on it. 
Uh, we managed to get into it and do build the boost libraries, hit GitHub and get Dogecoin source. Uh, had a, had a look at a variety of IDEs. Uh, we managed to configure it, set it up, and install a bunch of stuff. We've even managed to get a virtual Linux Fedora server running on the same workstation. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to rebuild that up. Uh, we're still going to carry on with C++ ASAP project, but please bear in mind that this uh, learning pathway is only for certain kinds of students. Uh, and to be honest, instead of tearing your hair out about programming C++ online, it's all for the dream achievement. And so it's a bit pie in the sky and that. If you want to perhaps put it on the back burner, and if you're really serious about getting software built and delivered and out there and achieving results, you're probably best. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all my bet on this year for 2022 C Sharp dot net. Uh, for the simple fact that it's about a million times more productive. Basically, and for your human being, for your Linux command line god. It might be beneath the Linux command line god to use any Microsoft products or what have you, but in the real world, uh, C Sharp on .NET, and especially with Unreal Engine as well. Uh, and yeah, everything Windows can do, Linux can do sort of, but kind of not worth it. It's not worth the frustration. It's not worth the mental energy as well. It's too incomprehensible. Really, It's too scatterbrained and that. Yeah, it does allow this infinite and unlimited flexibility, but then you're caught in that. Uh, you know, and really, you've got to look at it in terms of business and, and the, the economics of it. As well. If you're running infrastructure, like if you're running a massive server farm, or you're running a massive database, then yeah, it, that's kind of where it's that's kind of where its expertise is. Really, it's not it's not for the end user. It can do about basically surf the web basically without crashing and build C++ and CISO standard C++ yeah there's a like I mentioned in previous podcasts on the Fedora bundle we've got more than 140 different compiler modules uh, inside of the C++ compiler on Linux and that's that's for all the different platforms it can target and build for in the background so yeah there are some key stuff in there but if you're everyday man uh, if you don't want to like waste your own time, you know, you know, get on C sharp, get on C sharp on dot net. I might even get another PC and we'll just put it on Visual Studio twenty two Community Edition, which is free. Uh, Microsoft Beta uh, Windows Server twenty twenty two again Community Edition, which is free for one hundred and eighty days, and just drop Unreal Engine on top of it with the Visual Studio, uh, and straight away you're in there creating. Uh, video games etc doing the most complex work uh, you could also add the uh, Steinberg VSDK for the virtual instruments and uh, virtual plugin technology again it's a massive market it's doing hundreds of millions of years like there's big players Ableton of course uh, Adobe as well so if you want to produce film for a YouTube channel podcasts etc you know it's kind of like you know, I've been on Linux 25 years, mate, on and off. Like the crew told Fedora, I was actually on Fedora in early 2000s, before Windows Server 2003 came out, and .NET. Uh, previously on that, it was a Visual C7, Visual C6, 7. I think I started at Visual C6, or Visual C7. I remember the workbook working through it in the 90s. And that was pretty deep with Windows SDK and uh, Microsoft Foundation class. Uh, Object linking and embedding, and uh, the COM DCOM component object module, uh, which was real smart. That was uh, it was really to do with timing signals between infrastructure like test access po- test test access modules, TAMs, to be able to communicate with systems. They had to bodge on modules, and because they had different clocks, like they had different cycles, you had to stall everything. Uh, yeah, com, decom, object linking and embedding the Microsoft Foundation class. Uh, and that, that was just uh, when .NET first came out, uh, .NET 1, uh, Visual Studio, and Windows Server 2003. Uh, so, we've, achieved, we've hit Ubuntu previously and achieved all that. Uh, it's good to revisit tech 
little areas of tech for tighter time. Uh, but yeah, in terms of day to day productivity, Linux is definitely not the best platform. But certainly, if you're managing a server farm, then you you know you're managing a data warehouse, for example, or you're doing in particular scientific programming, uh, perhaps in a more academic or research orientated side, then it's a it's a long slog. Right, and it's difficult, it's tiring, it's overly complex, it's incomprehensible. Uh, if you want results, you know, you get yourself a Windows, get yourself a Windows Server 22. It's easy to set up websites, uh, domains, virtual machines, uh, install over over the cable, uh, user accounts, group policy, security on the Windows Server. Uh, yeah, there's... A source of tension and competition between the open source standard and Microsoft's individual implementation of it. But uh fact of the matter is this you can hit C sharp on .NET now with Visual Studio Community Edition, add an Unreal Engine on it, and you can hit two billion people uh on the internet with your results. You say you saw it's one of them, it's definitely in terms of the end user, the everyday people I suppose I haven't looked at Apple, the Apple ph- phenomena. I have not really looked at that, but certainly, you know, it's it's, uh, it's one of them. Like, because straight out of the box on Visual Studio, you've got all the templates and whatever, so you can hit whatever DirectX 3D game. You can hit a dynamic link library module, so you could perhaps program a VST plugin uh, for your Ableton or a filter for visual processing, like, for example, Adobe, you can actually program your own effects on it in Adobe. It has that object linking and embedding, that com decom architecture, that historical architecture inside of it. Uh, now I'm just ranting, so we'll leave it here for now. Stay tuned uh, over the, over this month, hopefully by, say by the end of January, we'll have the C++ ASAP on Linux Fedora sorted with the client and server architecture. And that's probably how long it's going to take to learn how to do it. Obviously, you can just go over to Microsoft now and get uh, the Beta Access uh, Server 2022 Edition and uh, the Community Edition Visual Studio. Uh, and you might as well add on top of that the Steinberg VST kit for developing audio. Uh, and on top of that, the Unreal Engine uh, for developing 3D video games. And you're going to be miles more productive. Uh Anyway, that being said, well, that's that for now. Thanks for the attention and time. Please like and subscribe. Uh, And see you next time.